Hi, welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 409. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea where I sell my hand spun yarns and uh, knitting patterns. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, January 20. Third, <laughs> and I hope that you um, are having a lovely week. It was a long weekend. I had lots of work to do and lots of lots of things to get done and a few um, crafting setbacks. Um, and so it was kind of a long weekend and I woke up today with a, a fierce case of the I don't want us. Um, you know, you have a million things to do and you just don't wanna. So I have been slowly working on my work tasks through the day and trying to get ahead a little bit for tomorrow and the rest of the week and then putting some of the tasks that I could do later in the week as in I don't wanna and I'll do it later in the week. So I hope that you are doing well. I think part of it is also um, the weather has changed here. It got quite cold over the weekend. We had some snow. I feel just ever so slightly under the weather. Like I don't actually think I'm sick but um, I'm kind of tired and I just don't feel quite right. Of course, that means I'll take a COVID test later this evening um, just to make sure that I'm not going anywhere and spreading anything. Not that I have a lot to do, although I do have um, a doctor's appointment tomorrow that I've been waiting a year for. So I really, really hope that the test is negative because um, like I don't have any specific symptoms. I just have that general like feeling like I'm running low and like I could be coming down with something. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go tomorrow if I feel like I am sick or contagious, um, but I would really love to keep that appointment because I've been waiting a year for it. Anyway, I hope that you are doing well. I have um, lots of knitting content to talk to you about, including um, I made a major boo-boo and I'm going to tell you about it. So um, you'll understand that we all have those issues. Um, and I am keeping warm today in my Potawatomi um, uh, poncho, which is uh, designed by Carol Sunday, and I knit it in her yarns. Um, I believe this is one of her yarns with a little bit of cashmere in it. Um, it was a lovely project, and if you need more details, you can probably find it on my blog if you look it up. Um, the link to the pattern is likely a Ravelry one, but um, more of the details will be there, and I believe I just ordered a kit straight from Carol Sunday's site. Um, so that is that. So today I am drinking some chai, and this is called Traditional Chai from Murchies, uh, which is in Canada. It was sent to me by a uh, viewer who I, I consider a friend who um, is also um, uh, a knitter and spinner, and she wanted to send me a little bit of tea and sent me a couple packages. The last package that I had was chai with maple. And this is just plain chai, which is fine. It sounds delicious. And she said just a little treat for you on there. And um, I like it. It's in sachets, so it's not loose leaf. Um, but that is totally fine. It makes it easy to brew. And I am drinking it in my Oive all day mug, which is definitely a theme for Monday. So that is delicious. And actually, I should note, maybe some of the reason that I'm sluggish is I OD'd on sugar this weekend. So my husband's birthday was yesterday and he loves German chocolate cake more than anything in this world. Um, and I did not bake him a German chocolate cake, but what I did do is I made German chocolate brownies. So basically I made chocolatey fudgy brownies and then I put the coconut pecan, kind of that German chocolate cake icing on top. I don't know what it's actually called, but it's a coconut pecan icing and it's what you find on a German chocolate cake. <laughs> So um, we ate a pan of brownies in the last few days. And I will say I left most of them for my husband, but there was just a tiny sliver left in the pan and he told me it was mine. And so I had it just before I grabbed my cup of tea to podcast and um, it was delicious. And there's a reason I don't make those very often because we just devoured them, um, but they were lovely. So um, let's get into the knits. I actually have two finished knits this week. Um, and I had so many new patterns with new designer names that I actually wrote them down today so I can tell you all of them and then they will all be on the blog as well and hopefully I will find some non-Ravelry links to send you to. So the first thing that I finished is I did a colorwork hat and I will say the colorwork hat was not successful as far, this is not one of the mess ups. Um, the colorwork hat was not successful in terms of I could have picked better colors to knit the colorwork hat. 
Um, but what I was trying to do was use up a lot of my leftover bits and bobs of blues. So the entire hat is all in blues. And so I don't think the color work shines the way it could shine. Um, but I think the hat is perfectly fine and it, I'll show you. So this is the color work hat that I did. Um, as you can see, there are a bunch of different, um, so the color work hat, Color Rock Hat is called the Easy Peasy Hat, and it was written by Carolina Adamchik, and it is a free pattern on Ravelry. The pattern itself is absolutely lovely. It is for a color work hat that is kind of a cream color, and then you have all these other colors um, that make up a bunch of different sections on the hat. Um, the sections on the hat are tonal, so you have a section with browns and a section with greens and a section with corals, and then I think a few more browns at the top. So the entire hat really ties together nicely. Um, I, on the other hand, was trying to use up all the bits and bobs of blue in my stash that I had gathered. So you can see that there is a colorwork pattern here. And you can see that what I did was I started with my darkest blues. I divided my, um, a lot of what I had left sort of in the blues bag. And I, um, basically I, uh, tried to pick the dark tones, the medium tones, and the light tones, and then pick from those as I was doing the color work. So basically you can see I started with a navy and then I went to kind of a royal blue and then I went to kind of a dusty blue and then I went to, um, it's actually a gray with bits of navy in it and it's hard to see against the background color and then this one is like a very icy blue but it's really hard to see against the background color. So and then for the background color I used that Kool-Aid dyed in berry blue yarn and I pretty much finished it off. So the how was success it was a success in terms of um, it was fairly easy to knit. It produced a nice hat. I ended up stopping. Well, so I ended up stopping for a couple reasons. One is that I used up the very last of my navy down here at the bottom. So I didn't even have enough to sort of complete the color work motif here at the top because it's a mirrored color work motif. It was supposed to be exactly the same. And the eagle eyed of you will note that I didn't I didn't have any more navies. So I didn't have like a dark, dark blue to put at the top. Um, so I, then I decided that since the other sections were basically more or less the same thing, but they had been in different colors on the other hat, I decided that I was just going to try and finish this blue skein. So I just basically went with one color work band. Like I said, it was super successful in that I used up most of my leftovers from the blues bag. The blues bag is very tiny now, and it's just like the last little bits of things. And I don't even know if I'll ever use them, but I can't bear to throw leftovers out. So they're just staying where they are. The pom-pom I made from all the colors that I used in the hat of those I had left. Obviously, I had no navy, so I didn't put that in there. Um, my point on the color work is just that it's kind of hard to see and that it's not very successful as color work goes in terms of being beautifully visually appealing because the colors that I were using were um, in some ways too close to each other. Like you can see that there's not much difference in some of these blues. And then against the blue turquoise background, um, like the light colors don't even show up. So it would have been a different hat had I picked different colors. Um, and there are lots of tips and tricks to picking colors when you're doing color work. One of which is to, if you take a picture of all your colors and you turn it into a black and white photo, you can see where you have shades of gray and see if you've hit like a lot of different tones so that things will contrast nicely. Um, as I said, this time I limited myself by just going with the blue palette. If I had gone into the other bags and picked other colors, it probably would have been a more successful hat which also gives me an idea. Maybe I'll pick some of those last little bits of blue to use in something else. Um, but I wanted to do another blues hat for Hat Not Hate. And so this is the final blues hat um, for this time um, because I am mostly out of blues. So until I generate a few more, um, I am done for now. So that is um, the blues hat. And I will put a photo of this on Instagram, which may show the blues a little better. The camera looks like it's blowing it out a little bit. Um, but that was just, um, that was the easy peasy hat. And that is a finish. Um, apparently I'm on a color work roll because I have a friend's birthday coming up and I wanted to knit her um, a cowl and I found a color work pattern based on the yarn that I had available to me, which was the leftovers from the sweater that I knit um, earlier this year. I did the... I'm blanking on the name. It begins with a W. It is by Jessie Made Designs. I knit it as basically a simple striped pullover. It is, oh, it's the V-neck um, striped raglan or something like that. I knit it not that long ago and I knit it in two shades. Um, one was kind of a um, magenta pink, which was called Magnolia. And um, then the other colorway, 
was named no sorry the white was magnolia the um the pink was sexy times and the um other color was kind of a speckled yarn that had um pink and neon highlighter yellow in it and it was a really fun yarn and i made myself a great sweater and i had bits and bobs of the um magenta colorway left over and i had almost a whole skein of the speckled colorway left over and so i found a really fun cowl pattern the pattern is called peaky and it's by Casey Herlihy. I told you I was going to have tons of new patterns and designers today, so I did write them down. And while it looks like a slip stitch pattern, it actually is um, a uh, traditional color work pattern. And I went ahead and knit that up in the last few days, and it is not blocked yet because I wanted to show it to you, but then I'm going to block it this afternoon. So it still looks a little puckery. All my ends are woven in, but they haven't been snipped yet. So if you see them, that's what that is. And here is the peaky cowl. So it looks like a slip stitch because there is a row of plain knitting in between the rounds of color work, but it is actually traditional color work. And I had just a little bit of the, the hot pink left. And as it turned out, I think I would have had enough to do the entire cowl, which called for the five repeats of the pattern. But I was concerned that I wouldn't. And I ran into, um, while I was looking through something else, I ran into the, and I can't even see it on the monitor here, but I'm hoping you can see it, um, the leftovers of a skein of a Mad Tosh in Edison Bulb in her DK weight. Um, and the other yarns are DK weight as well. And so I went ahead and put the yellow in there because there are actually flashes of highlighter yellow in the yarn. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to try and show that to you there. You can kind of see the little bits and bobs of yellow in there. And so it actually, while, while I don't think it was quite that pronounced, there was a little bit of yellow in it. So I think it's just kind of a fun cowl. So this was a relatively easy knit. As I said, I used three colors of DK weight yarn. I used um, K-Nerd uh, MCN, sorry, K-Nerd um, string, which is the yarn brand, and it was her DK MCN, um, and it was absolutely delightful, and like I said, the background color is in Magnolia, and then the accent color, um, is in Sexy Times, which was in that hot pink, and then like I said, this is Mad Tosh, um, Edison Bulb. So that is, and this was just a tiny bit of leftover that I had from a project long, long ago. Um, I still have a little bit of it left, and I have some other pinks, um, and actually I pulled out the bag of pinks to start on some leftover hats in pinks, so maybe I'll do something with pink and this um, neon color. It will be a neon hat. It might be kind of crazy, um, but this is the cowl that I knit for my friend's birthday. It is delightfully squishy. It is lovely. Um, I did... Um, the floats in this cowl pattern are not terribly long, but I did pick them up, so you'll be able to see that. Um, of course, now that I'm turning it inside out, you'll also be able to see my ends. Um, but it is um, a stranded pattern. I just wanted to show you that it is. It's not, it's not a slip stitch. It is a classic stranded, even though it kind of looks like a slip stitch pattern. So um, I need to block this one, and then this will go off as a birthday present, and um, you will not see it again, which is why I showed it to you today unblocked. Um, but this was really a delightful knit, and I would totally suggest this pattern. Um, it was well written. It's just a simple chart, um, and it was, I just really, I went right through this. I started it on Thursday or Friday and um, finished it up last night, and it was just, it was super fun. Um, the only thing I had to remember is to do the rest rows in between the color work. On one of the, I think on the yellow, I had to pull out a couple rows because I put them in right next to each other. And then it was like, oh crap, I need to knit a row in between. But it just, it's a really kind of subtle, I just, I really like it. And it also reminds me, um, reminds me a little bit of Charlie Brown <laughs> with the, with the kind of the dots and the, you know, just the little bits. Anyway, so that is that. So let's talk about the other things that I have on the needles. And I have a boo-boo story here. So First of all, let's talk about the top that I have been knitting for Zen Yarn Garden. Um, I have been knitting the Zen Zip Tee, which we just finished the knit along for um, last night. And this is a pattern by Suzanne Nielsen, and it is available on Ravelry. Um, and then you can get a kit for it from Zen Yarn Garden, and it looks like this. It is a sideways knit tee that has um, sections of plain, um, kind of in a natural um, fingering weight, and then it also has some of their mini skeins for kind of some artistically placed um, uh, panels. Um, and you work it basically, um, you work it side, you work the pattern side, well it is sideways, 
you work it sideways so that you are knitting you start at the center of the back and you work your way around to the front and then you start at, you go back to the center of the back and work your way around to the front again and then you join the fronts in um something that she calls the zan zip which is a little bit of a way to kind of um join the fronts without kitchenering or something else so i got a little cocky and um had a few problems so i have showed you in the past that i've been working on this oh and i screwed up the i have the needle set up weird on this right now because i just wanted to use one needle um so i'll see what i can show you and it's going to be a little it's going to be a little crazy okay so when i started this i started at the center of the back and i worked over the back left shoulder oops no i'm upside down sorry let's start again when i started i started at the center of the back and i worked towards the let's think about this the back left shoulder and this is the back left shoulder and then i cast pulled aside some stitches i left them live because i'll go back to pick them up later and this is the underarm section to the bottom of the sweater and then I picked those stitches back up and then I did um, the front section, which is kind of bunched up on the needle because it's attached to a different part. So then I went back to the center of the back and I picked up from my provisional cast on and worked the other direction. And then I did the back right shoulder and then I worked on the back um, underarm section to the bottom. And then I cast on for the right front section um, and did the front, um, did the front section where we also started to see some um, decreases for the V. I'm showing you the other side now because um, I had to rip mine out. We'll talk about it in a second. And then kind of um, to the center where I finished sort of at the bottom of the V. So what I need, what I had done is I completed that for the other side and I was all set to basically line my two fronts up and do what she calls the Zan zip to do that seam up. And so I went ahead and um, sewed that seam together the way I'm supposed to. And um, I did not have the same number on the left side as I had on the right side. So that when I finished, quote, zipping up the sweater seam, I had four more stitches on one side than on the other. Yeah. So it was very frustrating. I was very annoyed with myself. And I had to pull out half the sweater, which is why I am back. Well, not half. I had to pull out about a quarter of the sweater, which is why I am now back to um, the underarm segment. And then I just recast on for the black segment um, here. And what I found out was um, that the underarm segment, I hadn't picked up enough stitches because I had been... I think I had one less stitch because I picked up from the other side of my provisional cast on and I wasn't paying attention and didn't quite pick up. You know how sometimes you're one stitch off and so I didn't pick up quite enough stitches. And then when I cast on for the black section, um, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was talking at midnight and I did not cast on enough stitches to start with. So I went ahead and blithely did my increases and the second half of the sweater was shorter than the first half of the sweater. So I am now going back and I have double and triple checked my numbers and I have matched where all my decreases are and I am trying again to finish the sweater. Um, my goal had been to finish the sweater before we met last night for the final um, section of the, for the final session of the knit along um, because we have YouTube tutorial sessions or um, Zoom sessions where we meet and talk about it. Um, but that was not to be because as you can see I still have quite a bit more to knit on the black section and then I have to knit the final um, the final other half of this front section so that then I can put them together um, and so this is kind of in time out until I get to it because I have some other things I would like to do this month um, but my plan is to hopefully finish this up shortly um, because I would like to finish it and even though I won't be wearing a tee right away because it is like snow temperatures here um, I will want to wear it um, once I finish with the fronts then it's just a quick sleeve treatment it's a little bit of sleeve cap shaping and then um, a uh, a bit of a border a little bit like the border at the bottom of the sweater which I can potentially show you if I get to the right section sorry this is hard to show you um so then it's a little bit of um kind of this bias border that will be on the edging so um hopefully at some point I will have more to show you 
but I wanted to share that I am not infallible and I do make mistakes and sometimes I get to the point where I'm ready to put things together and I'm not ready to put things together. So um, that is what I am still working on. Again, there are kits available from Zen Yarn Garden um, and uh, you can still access the videos from our knit along if you want some extra instruction later on. We're just not going to be having any more sessions about it. So I actually cast on something new this week and it is another sample for Zen Yarn Garden. Um, since I was finished with the baby surprise jacket, it is time to start something new for them. And I am working on a new shawl and it's kind of an interesting shawl. I haven't printed out the pattern so I can't bring it and show you. It is called um, Bejazel or it might be Bejazel. It's B-J-A-Y-Z-L. And the pattern is by Syzygy Designs, who is Dorothy Bulak Ehrenstein. Eric, sorry, Dorothy Bulak Erickson. I can do this, really honest I can. And the links will be, um, the links or the information will be um, on my show notes. If I remember correctly, I don't think I found the pattern anywhere but Ravelry. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so the pattern itself is kind of interesting. It's kind of an open meshwork shawl. And um, it is meant to be worked in two different weights of yarn. And it is written to be worked either in like a DK and a fingering or a fingering and a lace weight. So um, I am working it in a DK and a fingering. And I think actually I showed this yarn last week. My DK is Zen Yarn Garden DK, which is a um, superwash, a super fine superwash merino in um, DK. It is 100% superwash merino and I am using a natural colorway. And then the other yarn that I am using is one of the Jump in the Pool skeins from Zen Yarn Garden. These are skeins that are dyed specifically so they pool and meant to be used in um, pooling patterns. Um, if you do not know what I'm talking about, you can just Google pooling yarn patterns and you will see. Um, basically, uh, the simplest way I can think of to describe pooling yarn patterns is that if you have a yarn that has a certain section of repeat, um, they are designed so that you do something different with different sections of the yarn. Um, there are quite a few patterns out there and they designed these colorways specifically to work with quite a few of the patterns. There are a couple, um, there is a uh, shawl and a scarf and um, some very specifically that Zen Yarn Garden has done and there are tons of others. Um, and this is a jump in the pool skein that has some royal blue and a lot of kind of teals and some red and some black speckles. And uh, they combine in this really interesting mesh pattern that is fairly easy to knit. It looks complicated, but it actually really is not. Um, and this is the start that I have to the shawl. So the shawl is going to be a crescent shaped shawl. And you start with very few stitches. And um, basically the, um, the uh, DK section is mostly in garter rows and then the um, the fingering weight section has a little bit of short rowing and some bind offs and cast ons almost the way you would do like oversized buttonholes. Um, and cause you'll bind off a bunch of stitches and then on the next row you'll cast the stitches back on. And so it's going to create a series of meshwork holes and they kind of um, expand over time. I am almost done with the setup sections. There are several setup sections where you're kind of building out your, um, because you're increasing, uh, in each section by a few stitches and you're kind of building these cute little like wing sections out there. It reminds me a little bit of um, uh, The Hitchhiker by Martina Bem in that sense because you're kind of adding on each time. Not that the pattern is similar, just, just the look is similar where you have these like little tabs as you're adding on. Um, and like I said, you are building bigger and bigger kind of mesh holes. And the interesting thing about this pattern is while it has um, an amount of yarn it calls for, it basically just tells you to keep going until you're finished. And it tells you what color to finish on and how to bind off. Um, and so I will probably knit a little bit more than, um, I have more yarn than the pattern itself calls for because of the put-ups. For instance, it calls for 300 yards of a DK weight and um, Zen Yarn Garden's DK weight skeins come in 250 yards a piece. So um, they had to send me a second skein so that I would have enough. So, but I actually have 200 yards more, so I probably won't knit all of it, but I will probably knit more of it. Um, and then the fingering weight, I think it also calls for about 600 yards. And um, the, jump in the, the jump in the pool skein, um, packages come in sets of three, which is 600 yards. So each of these mini skeins is 200 yards. Um, and so I will need to use one and a half. So I might as well use two 
Um, so my guess is I will make this a little bit bigger than the pattern course calls for. I'll also see how, um, how big it ends up being as I'm knitting it. But so that is what I started working on. I don't think I'll finish it this week. I think I'll probably need um, one more week beyond this. Um, but I just knit this up in starting kind of mid to late last week. Um, and I've already um, gotten, like I said, most of the way through it. And I'm almost to the section where basically I'm just going to end up repeating the pattern over and over and over. Um, like I said, these were the setup sections as you sort of start to build your shawl and have smaller holes. And, and at some point the holes aren't going to get any bigger. Um, I will just be increasing across so it will be creating sort of of that that crescent slash triangular shape that um, I guess it's sort of going to be an asymmetrical triangle but the way you block it it kind of um, goes out in a curve so that is what I'm working on there um, so let me take a quick sip of tea and then we'll go over um, a quick amount of spinning it's not going to be very exciting promise you I, I am such a I'm such a good podcaster I what I have to tell you now is not very important you could stop here if you wanted So um, the only thing I wanted to show you in spinning, sorry, get to my light, is that I spun, um, last week I showed you uh, the chicken feathers that I was doing for myself. And so I sat down at the spinning wheel and I spun some more singles. Um, this is Hello Yarn. It was um, on Rambouillet or Rambouillet. And um, it is uh, Enchilada Night. It was a special colorway that she offered to dye. And um, every so often she will offer a colorway that's dyed to order. And you can order as much or as little of it as you want. Um, and I did order a skein or two of it when she offered it dyed to order. But then in one of her later updates, she offered a um, grab bag of, um, or she offered a um, patchwork kit that was basically seconds of Enchilada Night. Meaning um, when she dyes the braids, she has little bits and bobs left over when she weighs them out and then braids them up. Um, so maybe she had a thing that was, I don't know, the whole thing weighed eight and a half ounces. And so she bundles up four and she bundles up four and then she has that half ounce left over and it's just a little bit of fiber. And so she just throws that into the bag. They're not seconds in the sense that they are of inferior quality. Although I suppose if you wanted a full color repeat, then I guess they are. But but they're seconds in the sense that they were little bits and leftovers. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with the fiber. They're just not like full color repeats. Anyway, so I have a one pound bag of the bits and bobs of this colorway and that is what I'm going to use for my chicken and um, because I'm going to work on my chicken feathers in my spare time from all my other projects and they are lengthy I think I'm just going to spin this up um, one skein at a time um, you know and work through and when I'm done and I've used it then I will spin up another skein so this is um, one of the skeins my guess is this is about three and a half ounces I didn't pack the bobbin super full. I kind of spun until I got tired of spinning. Um, I will say that this um, spinning singles um, is a very, um, I don't want to say time consuming process, but I have to do a lot of thinking about it. And I have to think quite hard um, to be able to spin a little bit thicker. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind off these singles and then I am going to take them and um, fell them, sorry, Pull them or felt them, which is I'm going to agitate them in hot and cold water, um, probably also with a little bit of soap to kind of give them a, a bit of a fuzzy and um, a more kind of locks the fibers into place and give it sort of a more sturdy finish. Um, if you want to know more about that, I talked about it at great length last week. So check out last week's episode, which was episode 408. So that is all the spinning that I did this week. And I confess that my spinning is going to be really boring for the next week or two. Um, I am working on a new chicken for the chicken studios. Um, I do, uh, I am a contract knitter for them and I help knit um, feathers for the chickens. Again, look at last week's episode. Um, while this is for my personal chicken, I'm, I'm actually making a chicken for myself. Um, I also work for them basically in piecework. And um, one of the things that we're gonna do is actually exactly like the feathers I showed you last week, I need to do another, um, they're kind of pinstripe. I call them pinstripe chickens because it's pinstripes of each color. Um, I spun quite a bit of white um, back in the fall, I think, like back in October. And they gave me a whole bunch of black and I'm gonna do another black and white chicken. So um, the next couple weeks, I'm going to be spinning plain black wool um, in thick and thin singles um, onto bobbins and then washing them and starting to work with them. Once I start to work with them and I knit up a few samples of the feathers, I will bring them to show you so you have more of a reference. But um, right now I'm just spinning plain black onto bobbins and it's not very exciting. So I'm probably not gonna bring that much to show you. Um, when I bring some of the uh, feathers to show you, I'll bring some of the yarn so you can just see it. 
Um, but I won't have, um, there won't be any new skeins going into the shop for a few weeks and I won't have anything real exciting to talk about there because like I said, it's just black and I have a couple pounds of it to spin. Um, I spin it pretty quickly because it's just singles. It doesn't need plying. Um, but at the same time, um, it's just black and it will take me the next couple weeks. So I think that is it for today. I hope that you are having a good week so far. I hope that you are um, feeling crafty, that you're feeling healthy, that you are staying warm and clothed and fed. Um, and I hope that there is um, just a little bit of joy in your week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If this is your first time, this is pretty typical for what I do, although um, I may be a little bit lower in spirits today than I am sometimes. Um, and uh, if you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for spending more time with me today. I always enjoy seeing you. I guess that's kind of funny because I don't see you. I just talk to the camera um, and then sometimes you talk back to me. <laughs> in the form of comments um or i i sometimes talk back to the talk back to the youtube podcasts that i'm watching as well anyway i hope that you have a lovely week ahead and until i see you again i will say as i always do happy knitting happy spinning happy sipping and i'll see you next time bye